I'm Dr. Chris Walzer. I'm a wildlife veterinarian and I'm the executive director for global health here at the Wildlife Conservation Society in New York. The society um, works in about 60 countries around the world and we have boots on the ground, first-hand experience on monitoring wildlife markets, looking at wildlife diseases, investigating spillovers. The Wildlife Conservation Society is um, the lead and the, actually the first to have an integrated health program throughout all its programs on a global scale. Um, we developed a concept called um, One World, um, One Health, which frames all our work. We link the environment to health aspects and we work mostly on this interface between wildlife, livestock and humans. So we're really well positioned um, to, to make statements on this um, outbreak and we have a quite an intricate um, understanding of markets and the dynamics of these markets and the, and the illegal wildlife trade that is ongoing on a global scale. This novel coronavirus has spread from a wildlife source into a human population in China. The most important factor for the emergence of this um, virus has been a wildlife market. So wildlife being traded at these what are called wet markets in China um, is at the center of, the, of this outbreak. So the wet markets we're talking about are generally markets which sell and, and process live animals and we're particularly and only interested really in those that process wildlife. The term wet market actually comes from the selling of seafood which is wet and these markets have wet floors and everything is wet on the floor. The way I see it though they're also wet because of all the bodily secretions from these wildlife and um, that's why we use that term wet market. Some of these markets can actually have 30, 40 species, wildlife species, at the same time in the market. The animals are alive on these wet markets, so they are actually shedding. Um, they're pooping, they're, they're sneezing, they're coughing, so it's very easy to exchange bodily fluids. Then they're being slaughtered on site as well, so then you'll have the blood as well, which is being mixed up. And you know, you, wooden cutting boards, you can imagine, you have everything. You have a bird slaughtered, 10 minutes later you have a, a tortoise there. It's a, just an absolute perfect cauldron of contagion and a breeding ground for new viruses. So this is what makes them so special. We're obviously also interested in stopping wildlife trade and wildlife consumption throughout our global programs. That includes Africa, and here the focus is really on the big cities. We're not talking about rural consumption of wildlife. And similar in Latin America, it is the consumption in the cities where people have alternatives. They could be eating chicken or other things. These markets are local, but the implications are global. So it's really, really important to understand that as a global community we have to react as well and um, close them down permanently. The Chinese government has to be commended, they have closed the, the, the markets now temporarily and I mean from the point of view of the Wildlife Conservation Society we absolutely need to make this ban permanent, um, not only in China but also in the other uh, countries that have this wet markets. Um, otherwise we'll just be sitting here again in, um, you know, we don't know, in a year or two and we'll have the next outbreak.